Okay guys, welcome back. Um, this is the final piece that I have to sculpt here, so I th thought I would just come back uh, now. And I've basically used this entirely same process across the board. Um, I've done all of the same with all of the pieces. Just really rough sketches here. Um, rough strokes, rather. Um, taking away all of the corners here. Let's see this corner as well. And when you're doing dents like this one on the bottom here, you're basically creating. Uh, you'll you'll see later, but you're gonna create some really um, natural ways to do the strokes upwards in the uh, the uh, the grains in the wood. Um, they can start from here and stuff like that. So make sure that you put at least some of those in there. Uh, it really does look look nice when you when you can use the the information that you already created to to make it even more um, realistic in that way. Uh, let's see, there's probably some more I can do on this side. Maybe a couple of more details like this. So yeah, so this is probably okay for now. So I'm gonna come out here, and you can see that I've now sculpted all of these like that. And this is now where we're going to use the custom brushes uh, from Orb. So I'm gonna hit B, and I'm gonna come down to here, down here to load brush. And I'm gonna browse my brushes here. I have a folder here called Orb brushes, and what I want to use here is the Orb uh, Orb cracks brush. So I'm gonna just click open, and I I now have this open. So you can see if I just isolate isolate select this one, you can see that this one has some really nice uh, crack um, details to it. Um, you could also use, uh, I believe, let's see, uh, which one did I think of? Uh, well, I can't really remember. It, it does uh, resemble one of the other standard brushes in in uh, in ZBrush. Um, but th this one is really, really good for making cracks, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this one. It does have a sharper uh, fall off than the uh, standard um, brush from ZBrush, so this one is actually uh, is actually just better. Um, what I'm going to use this for is uh, if we if we just get an overlook of this piece here, like this, <coughs> I'm going to come up here to Stroke, and we're going to come to Lazy Mouse, and you can see this Lazy Mouse is actually on right now. I'm going to Push this lazy mouse, uh, la lazy radius up to something like 20, and lazy steps down to something like 0.1. Uh, and this is probably good for now. I'm then gonna pick a kind of bigger size brush, uh, probably like 15 or something like that. And what it does is it allows me to have more control over how the brush strokes are actually put in there. So you can see this little red line. Uh, that I'm dragging right now, uh, it just makes me uh, makes it possible for me to see where the stroke is going um, before it actually goes there. So I can I can at this point I can still um, manage where I want it to go. Um, so if I want to make some last minute corrections to the stroke, I can I can using uh, lazy mouse. So we can do something like that, and then we'll pick a bigger one now. And let's see. Let's start with a big stroke here. And I mean, uh, like before, like I said before, I'm using the pressure sensitivity on the mouse. As you can probably see here to make these uh, deeper, uh, broader dents here. And uh, this is this is this is where the pressure sensitivity pressure sensitivity really comes in handy. Um, so we can do something like this, and then we'll take a bigger one here, and we'll just make. Something like this. Um, we can also, of course, also if you if you guys play a lot, play a lot of games with stylus textures and especially wood, you'll notice something like uh, a lot of the wood textures have small um, details like this, and you can of course put put this in uh, however you like. Um, what I would advise you to do is uh, I'm probably not going to do it in here, but I'm. I'm gonna advise you to go to the Trim Dynamic brush and uh, just trim away at some of these corners that are made by the uh, by the lazy mouse uh, strokes here, uh, something like this. 
just to uh, give it a little bit more detail and not make it too obvious that these are brush strokes. Um, but I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, let's see, BO for for getting back to my uh, brush, uh, the orb brush with the lazy mouse. And I can just do some a little bit more detail here. Something like this is probably good. Um, and you can of course also attempt to connect some of these uh, these um, grid veins here. So you can try doing something like the like this. This is, this is not too good, but you get the point. Uh, and you can you can do this for all of the pieces, of course. So if we come back here, um, this is basically one of the steps we want to get to, and we want to do this for all of the pieces. Um, so I'm just gonna select the next one. Oop, going to select a kind of a bigger brush. Let's see, something like this, and just gonna go into the wood here and create some grains. Let's do a smaller one. Let's let's probably make it a little bit closer, like this one. So, uh, not not like that. Maybe, maybe like this, and then we can take a bigger one again, and maybe have this come up from here and go into there. Um, you can of course also take them in from the side here, make it go up like up like that something like this and of course trim away at the, at the brush strokes here if you want to uh, I'm not gonna do it in this tutorial video I already did in the other one and um, yeah it's 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 working like this still so it's gonna put in a little bit, little bit more detail here a couple of more dents and stuff so something like this is probably good um, So we're gonna come back out here, and we're, this is not all all we're gonna do to this. Let, let's just take it one step at a time. So I'm gonna do this for all of the uh, all of the wood planks, and I'm gonna pause the video, and I'm gonna come back to you when it's done. Hello again, guys. Um, like before, I'm gonna come back when I have the last piece. I'm gonna sculpt left. Um, so let's see what we are, what do we want to do here. Let's just um, take a bigger brush here. Let's just make a big vein down, going down here, and let's also make one going up from here, maybe. Maybe it fades out like this one, and starts up here and goes down like that, and then maybe this one can finish up going into this one, so something like this. Um, I'm also going to make some of them come like this. So, well, that one was probably not too good. Something like that, and maybe up like this. So, something like that. Pick a bigger brush. Just gonna go make some detail like this. Well, that, that one I didn't like. Uh, let's just keep it like this. As you can see, I now have all of them sculpted like that. Uh, I've only put a couple of these designs into this. Uh, they're they're not really too important. It it all comes in. It comes back to style, if you want this or not. Um, I'm I don't want it for, for this one really. So um, let's just keep it like that. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do some slashes on the on the uh, on the planks. So I'm gonna import yet another brush. I'm gonna come back to into load brush. It's also an orb brush, so I'm just gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find this one called slash one. I'm gonna open that one. And what this basically does is if I isolate this one, you can see that it creates some very nice slashes on the edges. Um, something like if, if an axe or a sword has been chopped into this one and took out a piece. Um, works really really well for uh, for wood like this as well. So I'm just gonna come in and put a couple of these in there in different different angles and different places. I would advise you not to overdo this um, because it, it does quickly get too much. Um, what you can do as well is um, you can 
uh, when you have all of these selected, or maybe just, uh, yeah, if you have all of these selected, you can come in and you can put in somewhere like here uh, to give the illusion that, that both of these have been slashed um, at the same time. Um, so that one didn't really look too good, so let's see if we can do something like this. This one looks pretty good. Um, you probably don't want to uh, start the stroke inside one of these bevels. You probably want to start it on the plane uh, where you want it to actually be slashed on. So something like this. Um, but if you already have one here, I would advise you not to put one like here, for example. So if, if you want another one, you can probably do it around... Uh, let's see, you can probably do it here. Uh, and this one is going downwards, so this one could go upwards like this. Uh, and then basically I would just go in and I would just add a couple of different slashes um, to the individual pieces. Uh, something like something like this. And I would do this for all of the pieces, even the ones that have this, uh, this uh, slash that goes across different pieces. I would still add a couple of, of individual slashes as well. So these are maybe slashes that, has, that have come um, in the process of making this. Or maybe, um, like I said, maybe these planks have been used before. Maybe they have got those slashes there. So just be creative and um, and put them where you, where you feel they need to be uh, or what they could be. Um, and like I said, don't overdo it. I'm probably maybe even overdoing it right now. Um, but yeah, um, this is just a tutorial series, so this is just to show you guys how to how you can do this. Um, something like that is probably good. Let's see what we have here. We already have a couple of a couple of slashes here. This one there. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna put one here. I'm gonna put one. I'm gonna put a small one there. I'm gonna put one here. Then we're gonna put a bigger one here. Um, let's let's not run here on this piece, and there's not one here or one here, so I can probably get away with putting one here as well. Um, let's see, two pieces left. This one. Let's put one here, here, and here. Oh, that one's way too big. Although I actually did kind of like that, but yeah, let's just. Let's just keep it like this one, and let's put one, let's see, let's put one here, not there, 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 and maybe there. You can also put some in here, so if you have these uh, different veins going, you can, you can put those here as well. I would advise you to, if you do that, do it on all of them. Um, because it does, if you have only one, two pieces of those, um, it could break the, uh, the uh, tiling part of this texture. Let's put one here. And I think that's good for now. Um, so this is, this is what we have at this point. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of different, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to my brushes, I'm going to go to my standard S, uh, and then pushing T. I'm on my standard brush now. I'm gonna change change the stroke to freehand, and I'm not gonna use an alpha for this. Um, so let's come to this piece for example. What I want to do is I'm going to take a small brush like six, uh, and then I'm gonna hit Alt, and then I'm just gonna put in some holes like this. Uh, let's do an even smaller one here, something like that something like this as well. Just um, be creative with this. Um, again, the same principle uh, applies from before as well. Don't overdo it. Um, and don't be afraid to use different uh, sizes of this this brush here. Just put in a couple of holes. Um, these are worn um, tiles, or not tiles really, they're planks, but uh, these uh, they are supposed to be look like they have been worn or they've been used um, so there would probably be some slashes there would probably be some dents there would probably be some 
some holes in it as well. Um, so let's uh, wherever you feel uh, details missing, uh, you can put these. And don't be afraid to put two holes um, by each other like this. Um, just be creative with it, really. Um, we're just gonna put in a couple of quick holes here just to get this over with quickly. Oh, that one's too big. Uh, that one's probably also too big, but let's not let's not worry about that right now. Let's just get this done. Uh, that one is really not too visible. Let's get a four. Put these there. Put one here. Let's put one around here. One around here. Let's put one by that one as well. Let's put one here. And we also need one on these. Oh, this one. So let's put one maybe here. And there. Orb also does have a, a rubble brush that could be useful for this. So let's actu let's actually check this one out. So let's get back here and see which one of these planks do need holes. This one. So let's come to this one and let's go B and let's load brush. And I believe it's the one called rubble. Uh, like this one. I'm gonna hold down Alt. I'm gonna put these in like this. So you can see these uh, these holes do have, uh, first of all, there are two holes right here. Um, and they do have a sharper fall off than the ones that we're creating with the standard brush. Um, but the downside to this is that they do look like um, they do look like rock pieces, and I think, well, they, they are rock pieces, really. They, it is what they're intended to be, so as you can see here, when I'm not holding alt, they're coming out like, like rubble, like small pieces of rock. Um, so I'm not going to use these, um, but uh, if you're making, uh, for example, a stone uh, tileable texture, uh, you could use this um, to do these, uh, these kind of details. But I'm just gonna keep on using my standard brush, um, like this. Let's put one here as well. Uh, and lastly, let's put one. Uh, well, not one. Let's put a couple here, like that. So. This is what we have now, and this is what I'm gonna run with. Um, you could you could spend a lot of more time uh, sculpting this and coming up with uh, really really good designs, and you can probably come up with something better than this, and that's totally fine. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up for uh, rendering, and we're gonna do that in uh, another video, uh, the next video, uh, other than the next one. So um, I'll see you guys there. Um, thanks for watching so far, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.